Hey everyone and welcome back. We're diving into content knowledge graphs today. And how we can leverage them for SEO and content optimization. Okay. And we've got a fantastic guide for this exploration. Um, Martha Van Burkle. CEO and co-founder of Schema App. Thank you. Excited to be here. You know, I've got to say, I keep hearing more and more about these knowledge graphs. But to be honest, it all sounds a little bit like science fiction. Like, we're going to build this map of all the information on our website, and it'll mm. help with SEO. Can we unpack that a little bit? Yeah, I think that you've hit the nail on the head. It does sound futuristic, but it's actually probably more intuitive than you think. So imagine you have a bird's eye view of your entire website, and you can see all the different pieces of content and how they're all related. That's essentially what a content knowledge graph does. It helps search engines and AI mm. really grasp the meaning and the context behind your content and going way beyond just simple keywords. Okay, so I'm starting to get it. And especially when you mention AI, that really piques my interest. But before we go too far down that road, can you just remind us what schema markup is and how it all kind of plays into this? Absolutely. Schema markup is essentially a way to add labels to your website's content using a standardized vocabulary. So you can say things like, hey, this is a product, or this is a blog post about SEO, or even this person is the author of this article. Got it. So it's like subtitles for search engines. Yes. Like giving them a little bit more information. That makes sense. Yeah. But I always thought schema was mostly for getting those... Uh... You know, those fancy rich results like star rating. Or product information. Yes. A lot of people first encounter schema because of the rich results, which mm. is definitely a huge value benefit. But we're really talking about going beyond those individual snippets mm. and using schema to build this network of interconnected information, this content knowledge graph, and really reveal those deeper relationships within your website. Oh, okay. So instead of just like labeling individual pieces of content. We're actually showing how they all fit together. Yeah, exactly. Think about it this way. Let's say you have a website about hiking trails mm -hmm. and you might have individual pages for each trail mm -hmm. with information like uh, the length, difficulty, and elevation gain. But with a content knowledge graph, you can show how all those trails connect to each other, which regions they're in, mm -hmm. maybe even link them to nearby campsites or gear shops. Okay, so it's like going from a... S in a simple list of trails to an interactive map of the whole area. Precisely. And that richer understanding mm. is what makes knowledge graphs so powerful for both SEO and content strategy. Because search engines can see your website as a valuable source of information, not just a collection of pages. Okay, I'm with you so far. This is really interesting. But how does it actually work? Like, how does this translate into real benefits for me, for my SEO and for my content? Yeah. So for starters, it helps search engines understand the context of your content. They can see which entities are most important to your website, how they relate to each other. And this can lead to better rankings for relevant searches because search engines can confidently say this website is an authority on this topic. So it's not just about stuffing keywords in anymore. No, not at all. It's about building this structured, interconnected web of information that accurately reflects your website's expertise. And this is especially important in the age of AI, where search engines are getting so much more sophisticated in how they understand and process information. Makes sense. AI needs all that structured data. Exactly. It needs that structure. And so a content knowledge graph can provide that structure, making it easier for those AI-powered systems to yeah, access and understand your content. So this can lead to better search results, smarter content recommendations, and even new ways to interact with your audience. This is so cool. So how do we actually do it? How do we go about building these content knowledge graphs? Where do we even begin? The key is schema markup. And by using schema in a strategic way, we can create this map of all the important entities on our website and show how they relate to each other. Okay, so schema is like the building blocks exactly. of our knowledge graph. Yes, and there's some key techniques we can use to really make that graph come to life. Yeah. Like nested schema. Nested schema. Okay, now that sounds interesting. Tell me more. Nested schema is all about showing those relationships between different entities on a single page. So think back to that hiking website example. Let's say you have a page for a specific trail. You could use schema to mark up the trail name, the difficulty level, uh, the average rating. But with nested schema, you can actually embed the individual reviews within that trail's markup. Okay, so instead of just saying this trail has reviews, we're connecting the reviews directly to the trail schema. Exactly. This helps search engines understand that. Those reviews are specifically about that trail, not just any random trail on your site. It just adds a layer of context and precision right. to your markup. Okay, I see how that would be helpful for search engines, but how does that benefit me? Like, 
As a content creator or SEO, why do I care? Think about it this way. You've spent all this time gathering those reviews. You're showing the trail's popularity and trustworthiness. Nested Schema helps you get credit for that effort because you're telling search engines, hey, this trail is important and has all this valuable information associated with it. And that can actually help boost your rankings and visibility. Gotcha. So it's like I'm highlighting the best parts of my content and saying, well, hey, Google, pay attention to this. That's a great way to put it. And it's not just about reviews. You can use nested schema to show relationships between all sorts of entities. Uh, like on a product page, you could nest the product specifications, the warranty information, and even like related accessories. And just create this rich, interconnected hub of information. Okay, I'm starting to see this is getting really powerful, but I imagine it gets pretty complex. Like, yeah. as my website grows and I have more and more of these entities to connect, how do I keep track of it all? That's where unique resource identifiers or URIs come in. Think of them like unique ID numbers for each entity on your website. So you're assigning a URI to each trail, each product, each author. And it's a clear way to reference them throughout your markup. So it's like giving every piece of content its own little special address so search engines can always find it. Exactly. Let's say you have a blog post about hiking safety tips and you mention one of your trails by name. By linking that mention to the trail's URI, you're saying, hey, this is the same trail that we were talking about on that other page. Oh, I see. So we're like drawing a line between those two pieces of content. Yeah. Showing that they're related. Exactly. And the more connections that you make, mm. the richer your knowledge graph becomes. Search engines can start to see patterns and understand the depth of your expertise. And that can have a really significant impact on your SEO performance. This is like weaving a giant web of information that spans my entire website. But I imagine it takes some careful planning to make sure all those connections are accurate and meaningful. You're absolutely right. Choosing the right schema.org properties to describe those relationships is crucial. For example, if you're marking up a blog post, you might use the author property to link to the author's profile page. Or on a product page, you might use the brand property to connect it to the manufacturer's website. Okay, so it's all about using those schema properties strategically to tell the story of how our content's connected. Exactly. And remember, schema.org offers a vast vocabulary of properties to choose from, so you can get really specific about the types of relationships that you're describing. This is a lot to take in. Um, I can already see how building a content knowledge graph can be, like, quite a project, especially for larger websites. Are there any tools or resources that can help? Absolutely. At Schema App, we've developed some handy tools to make this process easier. For example, our Schema Paths tool can help you determine the best properties to use when connecting different schema.org types. Oh, that sounds super helpful. It's like a roadmap for building our knowledge graph. Exactly. It takes the guesswork out of choosing the right properties and ensures that you're creating those meaningful connections that search engines can understand. So speaking of making connections, I've heard about entity linking, so... How does that fit into building a content knowledge graph? Entity linking is all about connecting the dots between your content and the wider world of knowledge. It involves linking mentions of entities in your content to authoritative sources uh, like Wikidata and Wikipedia. So if I mention schema markup in a blog post, I could link that phrase to the Wikipedia page for schema markup. That's right. And this helps search engines disambiguate terms and understand the specific meaning that you're referring to. You know, they think of it like adding footnotes to your content. That point to the official definition of a term. Okay, that makes sense. Especially when you're dealing with terms that might have like multiple meanings. You know, you're telling Google, hey, when we say schema markup, we mean this specific concept as defined by Wikipedia. Exactly. It just adds a layer of clarity and authority to your content which can boost your credibility in the eyes of search engines. Okay, this is all starting to come together. So we're using nested schema to connect entities within a page, URIs to create unique IDs, and entity linking to connect our content to the wider world of knowledge. It's like we're building this multi-dimensional map of information. That's a great way to visualize it. And this multi-dimensional map is so valuable, not just for SEO, but for your overall content strategy. Mm -hmm. So imagine being able to see instantly which pieces of content mention your organization's values or how much content you have on a specific topic like AI and SAUCE. 
So it's like having a search engine for my own content. That would be incredible for content audits or competitor research. Exactly. Content knowledge graphs can completely revolutionize the way that you approach your content strategy. They allow you to see your content from a whole new perspective and unlock insights that would be really hard to find manually. This is so cool. So is this like just for large organizations, you know, with, with big tech teams? No, not at all. While building a content knowledge graph can be complex, you definitely don't have to do it all at once. You can start small, focus on the most important entities and relationships, and gradually build out your graph over time. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So even small businesses and content creators can benefit from this. Absolutely. In fact, starting small can be a great way to get your feet wet and see those benefits firsthand. And then as your website grows and your content strategy evolves, your knowledge graph can grow right along with it. That makes sense. So are there any specific strategies that like smaller content teams can use to get started? Yeah. One really effective strategy is to create a glossary using schema.org's defined term type. And this allows you to define those terms that are important to your website and link them to their corresponding entries and authoritative knowledge bases. It's like you're creating a custom dictionary for your content that ensures everyone's speaking the same language. That's a great idea. Especially when you're dealing with like technical topics or jargon. Precisely. Another strategy is to leverage existing tools and platforms that can automate some of those technical aspects of building a knowledge graph. Oh, okay. So we don't have to build everything from scratch. No. What would be an example of a tool like that? Yeah. At Schema App, we offer a range of tools and services that can help streamline the process of creating and managing a content knowledge graph. Our platform can help you identify those key entities, create structured data markup, and even visualize your knowledge graph to see how everything's connected. Wow. Okay. That sounds like a game changer, especially for smaller teams exactly. who don't have all those resources. We want to make this technology accessible for everyone, regardless of their technical expertise or budget. That's fantastic. Okay. So cool to see how content knowledge graphs are, like yeah. empowering content creators and SEOs at all levels to, to control their content. Yeah, it's a really exciting time to be working in this field. I feel like we're on the cusp of a major shift in how we create, manage, and utilize information. Definitely agree. And so grateful to have you here to like break it all down for us. We've covered so much already. But I have a feeling there's even more to explore, right? You're absolutely right. Content knowledge graphs have applications far beyond just SEO and content strategy. They can be used to improve data architecture, power AI innovations, and even create more intuitive and engaging web experiences. Wow. We've only just scratched the surface. I'm really eager to dive into those broader applications. But before we do, why don't we take a moment to kind of recap what we've learned so far about using content knowledge graphs for SEO and content optimization. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's pause here and gather our thoughts. And we'll be right back to explore those exciting new frontiers in the next part of our deep dive. Welcome back. So we've been on quite the journey exploring these content knowledge graphs. And how they can really transform how we think about SEO and content strategy. And before the break, you were hinting that knowledge graphs have uh, implications far beyond SEO. So where do we go from here? Yeah, so one area where knowledge graphs are making a huge impact is data architecture. So think about all the different systems and databases that organizations use to store their information. Traditionally, this data has been siloed which makes it hard to get a holistic view. Yeah, it's like all the different departments are speaking different languages. You know, they have all this valuable information, but it's not being shared effectively. That's a great analogy. But with content knowledge graphs, we can break down those silos by connecting data from various sources and creating this unified, interconnected knowledge base. Imagine being able to see how customer data, product information, marketing content, and even internal documents all relate to each other. Okay, so it's like having a single source of truth for you. Yeah. The entire organization. Exactly. And this unified view of data is also essential for AI innovation. Remember how we talked about AI needing that structured data? Well, content knowledge graphs provide that structure, but on a much larger scale, making it easier for AI systems to really understand those relationships between all sorts of data points. So we're not just creating a knowledge graph for our website, yeah. but for our entire business. Exactly. That's pretty amazing. So <laughs> what kind of AI applications does this lead to? 
oh, the possibilities are endless. Think about personalized recommendations that take into account not just a customer's browsing history, but also their purchase history, support interactions, and even their social media activity. Or imagine AI-powered chatbots that can answer complex questions by drawing on this vast knowledge base of interconnected information. It's like we're moving towards a world where AI is truly integrated into every aspect of business. Exactly. And everything's just smarter and more efficient. And this leads to another exciting area where knowledge graphs are making a difference. Web experiences. Imagine visiting a website where the content is seamlessly connected and personalized to your interests. Instead of just seeing those uh, random related articles, you'd see recommendations that are truly relevant based on the entities and relationships that you've interacted with before. Right, it would just make the whole browsing experience so much more intuitive. Yeah, it's like having a personal guide through this vast world of online information. Exactly. And it's not just about recommending existing content. Knowledge graphs can even inspire the creation of new content by revealing those gaps and opportunities. So for example, if your knowledge graph shows a lot of interest in a particular topic, yeah. but you don't have much content covering it, that's a clear signal to start creating content in that area. It's like the knowledge graph is constantly giving us new ideas yeah. and pushing us to like think differently about how we create and connect information. That's the power of it. It's not just yeah. about organizing data. It's about unlocking its true potential and using it to drive innovation and growth. This has been such an amazing conversation. I feel like we've only just scratched the surface of what content knowledge graphs can do. So for our listener who is ready to get started, what's the one key takeaway you would leave them with? I think the most important thing is to start thinking about your content in terms of entities and relationships. So what are the key concepts and topics that your website covers? And how are they connected to each other? And once you start seeing your content through this lens, you can begin to explore how schema markup can help you express those connections in a machine readable way. So it's really about shifting from like a keyword mindset to an entity mindset. Exactly. It's not it, it, just about the individual words anymore. It's about those bigger picture concepts, the connections, the web of information. Exactly. And remember, you don't have to do it all at once. You know, start small, focus on those most important entities and gradually build out your graph over time. There are some fantastic resources available to help you, including Schema App's Guide to Content Knowledge Graphs, which we'll link in the show notes. And don't be afraid to experiment and have fun with it. This has been incredibly inspiring. I'm, I'm walking away with like a, a whole new perspective on the power of schema and knowledge graphs. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been my pleasure. I'm really excited to see how you put these ideas into practice. And to our listener, we hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into content knowledge graphs. We encourage you to check out the resources that we mentioned and start building your own knowledge graph today. You might be surprised at what you discover. Until next time, keep diving deep and keep exploring the world of content and SEO. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.